Jupiter, fairy godfather, Santa Claus, guru, dispeller of darkness, and basically all over good guy is about to head retrograde. And that is a good thing. Despite opinions of retrograde planets, this retrogradation of Jupiter can allow you to go back and do things differently to um, repair or restore, renew something that you were trying to create, an opportunity, a direction in your life, and it didn't quite get off the ground. So it's kind of a fixer-upper job coming through the sky, as well as new opportunities because you deepen and you go deeper and deepen down into what it is that you want to have in your life prosper, thrive, and grow. You know that old Spock thing, live long and prosper, that's so Jupiter. And this is where your Jupiter story stories, children, luck, abundance, expansion, growth, generosity, and spirituality are going to deepen. And when does this happen? Jupiter begins his retrogradation on September the 4th at 15 degrees of Taurus and completes it on December 30th as he stations direct at 5 degrees of Taurus. So we're going to talk about what this means for you based on your rising sign most accurate sun and moon secondarily you can cast your chart in whole sign houses using my free tutorial and learn what your rising sign is all you need is your birth time free tutorial freebie giveaway in the description box below okay so first of all before we get started if you're new to my channel welcome just hit that like button subscribe give me a try my name is Lori Lothian I am using the western tropical zodiac this is not sidereal or Jyotish or Vedic astrology although I do use tools from that tradition as well as Babylonian. I am a traditional astrologer. I focus on predictive value for you and helping you navigate the skies by making informed choices about what may or may not be happening in the collective weather. So in that case, we also talk about the mundane astrology. We'll be doing a little bit on this video, not a lot, about one of the big things that Jupiter's up to over the next few months to do with world events. Now, if you're one of my regulars and you're not new to my channel, thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys. You really are, you know, amazing for supporting me. And I have a bunch of regulars in my live premieres. And if you're in the live premiere, please hit the like button. Thank you so very much. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go straight into talking about a few of the basic ideas. I'll be sharing a picture of the sky and we'll be going into all signs. Okay, first of all, <laughs> Let's talk about the idea of a retrograde Jupiter, right? This is concept of retrogradation for the Mercury story that makes it like, oh no, planets retrograde. And that's not true. A retrograde planet can be very much about something that has to retrace old ground. Like the planet seems to retrace degrees that had already traversed or, or traveled through a zodiac sign. And so Jupiter is going to say, oh, on September 4th, wait a minute. I forgot something back there. I'm going to go back and check it out or fix it or repair it or renew it. If there was a false start in some area of your life, there's kind of a cosmic do-over or repair job that Jupiter can do. And he can also deepen the successes you're already having by putting a more blessed and deeper um, engine block, foundation into the things that you're up to in your life these days. Uh, let's also say this, you know, Jupiter in Taurus is where he's traveling and he's been there since May the 16th and will be there till the 25th of May in 2024. And that's a once every 12 year Jupiter transit through the zodiacal sign of Pisces. And this has happened before. I mean, Pisces, I say Pisces, I mean Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. This has happened before. Jupiter is traveling through Taurus. And I want you to go back and think of these dates. Okay, I'm going to give you the dates that he's traveled through Taurus in recent time, because you may find that events that are happening during this May of 23 to May of 24, including the retrograde, are something that are familiar to you, cyclical, reoccurring areas of prosperity and abundance, growth and expansion, luck and opportunity. Those are Jupiter key words. So go back in your life to June of 2011 to June of 2012 basically. That was the last time Jupiter was in Taurus. Before that, um, we want to go back to March of 1988 to July of 1988. Then he took a break and came back to Taurus, November of 88 to March of 99. So in essence, you can kind of go March of 88 to March of 99, but keep in mind there was this retrograding energy. So it was really March of 88, July of 88, then November 30th of 88. I look at my notes and to March of 1999. 
So what was going on in your life back then? What were you up to? These are key times. These are things that were, you know, cooking and baking away in the sky. I was conceiving a child then in an 88 to 99 time frame. That's my son who's, you know, 34 now. And, you know, it's interesting because Jupiter rules children and fertility as well. And then go back to March of 1976 to August of 76 and then October of 76 to April of 77. That's the next time Jupiter was moving through this part of the sky as far as i can remember i was having a really good time succeeding in high school <laughs> but um it depends on what your taurus piece of real estate is in your chart i'm an aquarius rising my whole sign taurus house is fourth house of property home real estate mother childhood land things like that okay so domestic private life etc so you want to think about knowing which of the 12 pie slices and whole sign houses, please use whole sign houses that Jupiter is in charge of. And when we do the rising sign, sun and moon secondarily, we're talking about what that Taurus house is for you as if your sun is your first house pl placement, your moon is your first house placement or your rising sign, which of course is your first house placement. Okay. Um, and if you don't know the meanings of the 12 houses, I've got a free PDF in my description box called freebies. Just download the PDF and I go into a deep dive into the meanings of each of these 12 houses. In this case, your Taurus whole sign house. So I gave you some backdrop. Now I want to say there's an interesting thing when Jupiter goes retrograde. He is guru, dispeller of darkness, holder of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. And when he goes backwards, these things deepen. And people who are born with a Jupiter retrograde often will lean into a deeply mystical, spiritual quest in their lives. They don't just leave, you know, God, truth, religion, and mysticism off the table. So a couple of my favorite examples, one is Elizabeth Taylor. I everyone thinks there is the, 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 the girl with so many marriages. And by the way, Jupiter does uh mean marriage partner for a female in vedic astrology um but what else you you don't know about her is that she had jupiter retrograde when she was born and she converted from christianity to judaism so she had a mystical bent and she was concerned with finding the right religious path um george harrison one of the beatles famous for his spirituality his mysticism and famous for the my sweet lord song you know my sweet lord you know, I think it's a like Harry Krishna, it's a Krishna, Harry, Harry, I can't sing, but it is a Harry Krishna song. He was into the Harry Krishna uh, devotional path to, to God and the divine. So you can see his, you know, he's into tr transcendental meditation. Um, he was famous for the kind of being the soulful one in the Beatles, right? Not just about, can I hold your hand? No, he went like really deep. So I want you to consider that with Jupiter is retrograding through the sky, collect Collectively and individually, we have a chance to deepen our connection to our soul. Now, in a video I just did with Mars and Libra, as he connects with the South Node, last seen in 1987, but also in 1931, the onset of the Great Depression, also in um, 1968, a panic bear off, bear market and the stock market sell off. That that is going to probably look like a very turbulent time this fall, particularly late September through October, where it looks we're having some kind of catastrophic vibe or upset in the stock markets, but maybe no, I shouldn't smile, I'm sorry, but be careful, or the real estate markets or both. And also with the idea of the economy not being all so wonderful in the world. And so if that's all going on in the background and now Jupiter's going deeply retrograde in Taurus, a sign that we associate with currencies, resources, resourcefulness, um, monetary and um material things right he's going to ask us to go a little bit deeper than just our bank account a little bit deeper than just our vip passes or our you know our pleasures and leisures and sensual pleasures of taurus we want to go down into some kind of deeper spiritual understanding of what truly motivates us in life I mean, Taurus is kind of sensuality, the five senses, earth, prosperity, uh, you know, grounded energy, uh, fixed, doesn't like change. Uranus is there. So Taurus is going through a lot of turmoil. Uranus and Taurus during, you know, the Great Depression, Uranus and Taurus now, Mars, South Node and Libra. 1931, the Great Depression, a lot of similarities, squaring Pluto back then in Cancer, now squaring Pluto in Cap. We have so many similarities to the onset of the Great Depression in the sky now. Then Jupiter goes backwards starting September 4th, by the way, the same day Venus goes direct and says, let's go deep. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Like, where's your soul in all of this, really? What's your truth? What's your faith? Where do you, where do you source hope and optimism? Who do you pray to? What is prayer for you? 
that's big things coming up for the collective and individually. Now, before we do the all signs, I want to talk about the Sabian symbol that's activated when Jupiter stations at 15 degrees of the sign of Taurus. Now, if you have a planet, but most importantly, your sun, your moon, or your rising sign degree at 15 Taurus, 15 Scorpio, okay, those are opposite each other in the heavens. That's, you know, important to know. Um, 15 Aquarius or 15 Leo, the the angles 90 degrees away give it three degrees on either side of 15 this is one of the most important jupiter retrogrades of your life my ascendant is around 18 degrees of aquarius i am one of those people for whom this jupiter retrograde will deeply deeply impact the trajectory and course of my story so you look for your degrees there other planets at 15 Taurus, similar, but not as important. You know, your Venus is there. You'll have to know your own astrology, the meaning of the planets and how they would work with Jupiter as he stations at that degree, 15 Taurus and retrogrades. So there's an onset like a pitch pipe when we do music, you know, let's get that key. Like, ooh, ooh. I'm a terrible singer, but you know, you know, like they do that thing, you know, for the choir and the, the choir mistress gives the pitch pipe thing. Well, anyway, that is kind of like setting the keynote or the energetic signature of the onset of the retrograde 15 Taurus. And when he does this retrograde at 15 Taurus, he's in a, in a Sabian symbol, which is 16 Taurus, we round up. And the Sabian symbol, which I wrote down, is an old man vainly attempting to vainly attempting to reveal the mysteries. I think this is very interesting, an old man vainly attempting to reveal the mysteries, the Sabian channel symbol for 16 Taurus, because while he goes into his retrogradation and he stations at 15 to retrograde, and he's moving very slowly because he's almost a stationary, he's going to form a trine to Mercury retrograde at the same time around 15 degrees of Virgo. And if you wanna talk about what Mercury cares about, information news ideas but mercury's retrograde so he's also like diving deep to reveal the mysteries and jupiter's supporting that so there's a lot of mercury and jupiter over the four plus months of this jupiter um retrograde there's so many non-stories because jupiter is an aversion to many planets that are um, appearing in our sky meaning he can't make any real connections to them okay so for example, just so you understand, I don't do semi sextiles. I don't do in conjuncts. I'm not, I don't believe they work in the tangible world, maybe in the invisible realms. Um, so with that said, any planets navigating, any planets in your natal chart or any planets navigating through the heavens, through the, and asteroids, through the uh, areas of the sky that are Aries and Gemini, right? And Sagittarius and Libra are completely not a part of this narrative. And that includes Mars, by the way, who's in Libra for quite a long time. Um, so Mars will get out of Libra on, I think, o October the 5th. So Mars has nothing to do with Jupiter until after that, when he heads into Scorpio. And that's going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of Mars and Jupiter contact going on, which is explosive energy in the month of November, like eek. All right, so we got to keep all these bigger picture stories in mind in order for us to make sense of what is actually happening here. So we wanna say an old man vainly attempting to review the mysteries. What mysteries do you need to reveal, reveal in your own life? Where do you need to go deep and use ideas, Mercury and Virgo, news information, research, in order to reveal the mysteries that are going on in a trine, a flow between your Virgo whole sign house and your seventh house. So when we do the all signs, I'm just going to focus on that because I'll be doing separate videos when, say, Jupiter opposes Mars and squares Hygieia and it creates a grand cross with the asteroid Apollo in early November. That is a pandemic story. That is a pandemic story. I'm so sorry to tell you it is a pandemic story. It also can be an illness of a world leader story in the first few weeks, first few days, last part of October into early November. That's a mundane astrology. I'm not going to cover that today. Today, we're going to talk about sort of more like the, what is the gist of what's trying to happen for each of us, September through to the end of December? Something that can't have happened again, like the last time something like this could happen, right? The last time this was available for us was back, as I said, on your dates were June of 2011 to June of 2012. So you have to go back to that time in your life. What's really different about this Jupiter story is Uranus. Uranus and Taurus, not seen in Taurus since what? 
drum roll, you know, like the 1930s, Great Depression era, and the rise of fascism and dictators and all of that stuff, um, disruptions to food supply and all of that stuff. So and our bad weather can happen with here and we got worldwide fires, extreme energies, you know, hurricanes off the off the shore of California, unheard of weather patterns. That's very Uranus, Dust Bowl. Remember the Dust Bowl? Uranus and Taurus. And so we had Uranus and Taurus since 2019 in earnest. He tiptoed in in 18. He doesn't leave to 26. And that was, this is what makes this Jupiter story very special because next April, Uranus and Jupiter will combine forces in a conjunction. And unless you're over 80 something years old, you haven't seen this happen in your lifetime. So it's all brand new. It's a big deal. I can't wait to do that video for 2024 for all signs and also for my year ahead video package. But in the meantime, get the idea here that this is a um, Jupiter co-present with Uranus, retrograding at 15 degrees. Jupiter is not touching Uranus yet. That's next year. As I said, in April, Uranus is at 23 degrees during the onset of the retrograde. Jupiter will back tail to five degrees of Taurus to turn around on the 30th of December. Happy New Year's, everyone, because the next day he's direct on New Year's Eve, etc. Five degrees is an interesting placement for a star. Okay, there's a star there called Sheraton. And I don't use this star very often, but when a planet is stationary, to turn around and go direct is powerful. And so what I wanna say, I'm going to just tell you what the software tells me about the meaning of this star, because it's very possible that we all will feel the positivity of this star as Jupiter aligns with the star at the very end of the year and begins to move forward and we see something new happen in our sky. So of course I have it ready to go, but and now I can't find it. So give me a five second window where, I, for some reason, my document on the back end of my software, there it is. So Sheraton, like the Sheraton Hotel, is a star of active and purposeful energy. Active, purposeful. It creates people who are born leaders. It bestows restlessness, um, never being able to sit still for long. So a restless, ambitious, purposeful, active energy, basically. Movers, shakers, if you're born with that star on a planet. Don't forget, we're talking about the degree of five Taurus. And I suggest you avoid being aggressive or overworking to adrenal exhaustion. But there's a, like a kind of a mover and shaker energy. And Jupiter is suggesting that this feels like a positive place for his station into direct motion. And what about the Sabian symbol that he's going to be working with as he stations at five Taurus, which converts to six Taurus in Sabian symbol land? What about that star? What is that symbol about? It is a symbol of a bridge being built across a gorge. I don't know about you, but that feels good. I mean, there's like a, you need to get to the other side of something. And the only way to do that is to make a bridge. So he's going to be bridging something that is separated or the, in which there's no contact. Like it could be very good for peace and war places or, uh, you know, bridging the gap between countries at war, for example. I'm not sure what else he can do here. Bridging some other bridges in our each of our Taurus part of our chart. For me, that's my fourth house of home and property. And he's going to bridge a gap, maybe take me to my next home because he's going to be there until May 24th. So I'm saying December 30th till May the 24th, 25th, we're bridging some gap collectively. And in your own Taurus whole sign house, you are bridging a gap. <laughs> Woo, and when Jupiter conjuncts around April 20th with Uranus, it's very exhilarating, exciting and sudden, maybe prosperity, bounty and goodness, success and opportunity for each of us in our Taurus house. I can't wait to do that video. Now, I got like I did put a video out with the Mars Le the Mars and Libra and it is a bit of a bummer. Okay, I'm gonna just like no no two ways about it. It just came out on the day of this recording, August 25th, and I record for my Patreon community before you guys get it, and then it goes out onto the public. You know, for five bucks a month, ad free early access. Come join me there. Promotion during the month where you get eighty dollars worth of free gifts or checking out Patreon. The dis access to my Patreon community is in the description box below. Just this month of September, this is a promotion, but it starts August 20th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's keep going about the other stories I wanna bring up. I think I'm gonna show you the picture at this juncture. I wanna see if there's anything I forgot on my little handy notes that I have here. Uh, not really. It's kind of like Jupiter is off to a really exciting start. Let's look at the chart, I'll do some annotations and then we'll break into the whole all signs part of the story. 
Okay, so I also forgot to mention that Jupiter is sitting with Albion. I forgot to mention that. So here's Jupiter and Uranus and Albion. Albion is the asteroid of the hill where the giants lived in England. And Albion, here he is, can represent a place where we are on rote autopilot, doing things the same old way, but needing to break free, bust away from the way things have always been done. So there's a need to break away from the status quo, the rote, the, the way it always has been done. In Taurus, it can be about finances, prosperity, money, currencies, even stock markets, and a breaking away from the way it's been done. And when I talk about currencies, there's that central bank digital currency that could be coming up for all countries. Also, there's an unhinging of you know money from the gold standard already, and there may be an attempt to rehinge money to gold standards. Who knows? You know, Venus just spent four months in Leo. Leo rules gold. Don't take financial advice from me, but possibly gold would be a good investment if you have money to do that with. So there's Jupiter on Albion, the asteroid at 15 degrees, perfect, right? Perfectly ready. Uh, don't forget, it's that Sabian symbol here of the um, old man vainly attempting to reveal the mysteries. And here's that Mercury story I was mentioning. Mercury is already retrograde with the sun. He'll be in the heart of the sun, in the heart of the sun, which is a very magical place on September the 6th. But on the 4th, he's not with the sun yet. But it doesn't matter because when he is with the heart in the heart of the sun, Jupiter is still forming a flow called a trine and it's full of positivity, opportunity, luck and goodness between Mercury, the god of marketing, selling and merchandise and stock markets and your and Jupiter breaking the way it's always been done. Now, I think September could look like everything's fine in the markets. We need to get to the end of the month, early August, October for it to not look so good. So in other words, like maybe the Fed says we're going to start to stop our interest rate hikes and the market could rebound in the first week of, of, of September or the Fed signals it's going to take the interest rates down a bit, you know, but it needs to go to zero to save the day and that ain't happening. So there's kind of maybe a jovial, jove positivity because both planets are retrograde. We're going back over ground that's already been traversed by each of these planets in your natal Virgo house in your natal Taurus house. And this is like, a, as I said, remember I said a cosmic do over um, to repair or fix or restore or renew maybe something that didn't get off the ground the way you hoped it would, or to go back and you some, do something you've done before and gin it up and make it more successful. Like I'll give me as an example, I'll be teaching my Sky Reader course which I've taught three times and it's going to be retaught again starting the third week of September. And it may say that, okay, this is the fourth and the best time, Lori, you're going to do a way better job this time teaching this class. I get better every time at teaching six weeks of astrology, you know, so sign up for the course guys, be here on astrologer time, your best life and come learn from me live. So I do like the vibe that things start off with. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, Jupiter trines the sun and most exactly on September 8th. That's really positive energy, vitality, enthusiasm, expansion, prosperity, purposeful good luck, luck in your career. All of us feel that energy together. Where things get really challenging, and as I said, I'm not going to cover this now, but I will be covering it later, okay? And it's this energy here of Hygieia who's the goddess or whatever. I'll just jump the chart ahead and give you a, a sneak peek at that, okay? Because it will be waiting for a later time. Let me clear the mess I put on there. And let me just jump us ahead to, I think October 28th, Halloween looks very spooky. Let's go um, move us to the 28th. I just jump us ahead to September the, did I say October the 28th, okay? Now watch this. Okay. October 28th. And we're just jumping into the future. Got to love it. Okay. What's happening here is this. We have Apollo, the sun god, the asteroid for Apollo. He was a god of prophecy and plagues, but also he means leaders, right? World leaders in Leo, which means kings and leaders. Opposite Hygieia, the god of sickness, health and health issues, preventative health, hygiene. Mm -hmm. And here we have Jupiter, you know, and we have um, this, and this is called a T-square. Wait, maybe annotate for you again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, where's my annotation? There we go. Let me annotate a little bit, and we'll then we'll leave this story behind because we will be doing all signs. This is mundane astrology, guys. This is just where I'm trying to make sense of the sky and, and make some statements about what may be going on in the world. Isn't that funny? 
my annotation button just disappeared. How can, how can that happen? I've never seen that. Oh, how weird. Okay. Well, I'll try one more thing. I'm clearing. Yeah, clear all the drawings. And I've never had this happen. Try it again. There we go. All right. So here's a po a po annotate. Yes. <laughs> I don't even have a clue what's going on here. Nope, that's not working. Anyway, well, maybe it'll work for another reason. I can just go like, look at that. Okay, that's the opposition between a sun god and a health problem. Obviously, a world leader can be ill. That's basically what that may mean. It may not mean that. It could mean something else. But it's possibly that some, there's an illness with a major world leader or a health challenge with a major world leader. Or there's more problems with plague, pandemic, Apollo, health, hygiene, hygiene, you know, mask up on a plane. There's a big story going around that a TSA person said the Biden administration warned them that they're going to have to put mask enforcement back in place this fall. Is this true or is this conspiracy? I don't know. And that they're aiming for December full testing at the borders and, you know, COVID pandemic past ports of vaccination, etc. I hope not. I really don't think that should would happen. But here we go. And here we have Jupiter. Now Jupiter is in a lot of tension with this, it creates a T square energy. And that is not a happy place. That is not easy energy, right? It's, um, it's tense. Ugh. I have no idea why the annotation has disappeared. But let's try playing with this new feature that I just learned, right? Yes. There we go. That's a T square. That's tense. But where else does it go? It creates a grand cross. It goes over to Mercury and Mercury's with Mars. And what does Mercury Mars do together? Mars is a god of plagues and Babylonian astrology. Mars is a god of war. He's in Scorpio. He's a god of spies and stealth and CIA and all those guys. He went uh, police, police detective, forensics, investigations. That's a very Mars Scorpio placement. And Mars will go. He's invisible here, guys. He's going to go into the heart of the sun on November 17th to die and be born again. And therefore, we don't see him. He's very undercover, undercover war, secret stealth, secret things to do with plagues, Mercury course in Scorpio secrets as well or news information being revealed it was secretive I don't know anyone have a thought there out there in my YouTube channel and you want to put this in the comments I'd love to hear from you because what we have is a big grand cross and that is gnarly super gnarly with Uranus being we're all a bit shocked by the whole darn thing <laughs> and so it's either a shocking health challenge with a world leader that surprises everybody and or new pandemic uh, disclosures variables or activities going on and i'm not really saying uh, october 28th is going to be a bed of roses and that will last about a week okay so let's say october 25th and november 4th we're seeing this kind of sky play out for the world i'll be doing a longer video looking at the asteroids and stars involved in this but just for now that's all i got you know we're not going to do that today though for us we're not going to focus on the gnarly stuff the reason is, is that your story isn't that story. Your story isn't about, you know, a world leader. Your story isn't about necessarily border cons border restrictions, right? That's another person's, that's a, that's a collective narrative. We're going to go and just talk about you. So we're going to start with Aries and then we're going to go through it. And remember, I'm reminding you uh, of the positivity to uh, redo something, to fix a false start, to deepen a prosperity path that you're already on, to open up to luck by going back over old ground, maybe to get that um, revealing the mysteries. Um, old man who was vainly attempting to, reel the, to reveal the mysteries. Well, hello, Jupiter is the guru, dispeller of the darkness. And if anyone can get re mysteries revealed, it's going to be Jupiter. And um, I didn't mention this, but there is a Mercury Kazemi webinar I'm teaching on the 5th for the 6th, for the big event on the 6th. And we have Mercury on a very powerful star coxa at the time of the Kazemi, the paw of the lion, very full of divine Shakti and good energy. So if you want to come join me for that, the Mercury webinar is in the description box. Uh, it's in the 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern daily time on the 5th of September. All right, so that's in the description box as well. Everything is in the description box, right? All right, we'll start with Aries. I'm going to just uh, move the screen to Aries so that we all get on the same path. And what, what are we talking about? We're going to talk pr primarily about, let's go back to the right time. Ah, give me a sec, guys. And we'll just move that chart back to September the 4th. We're talking about the good energies that start this retrograde. And we're talking about how it's got that Mercury love up. 
as Jupiter stations to go retrograde. And I'm reminding you, if you are those people who are Taurus and Aquarius and Scorpio and Leo, and you've got planets anywhere around 15 degrees of those signs, but particularly the sun, the moon, or the rising degree, ascendant degree, this is a critical Jupiter retrograde for you. Very rare, very intense because of Uranus's co-presence. Second of all, all the flow goes, all the flow goes to your earth signs. So of course, you Virgos, rising sun and moon near 15 degrees, give or take three, Taurus sun and moon, uh, 15 degrees, give or take three, right? Like you should be liking this, right? Did I say that? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a conjunction for you Tauruses, so it's intense, but you know, and the Cappies, the Capricorns at 15 degrees, sun, moon, and rising, there's more of a flow from this perspective of earth trying energy to you. Okay. So let's just stay with that. Uh, Capricorns and Virgo rising people, sun and moon secondarily, you're going to like what's going on a whole darn lot. Same with you, Pisces rising, especially if your ascendant's near 15 degrees or your sun and moon. Same with you, Cancer rising, if your ascendant is near 15 degrees or your sun and moon, because this is sextiling you. So these are the places of flow. The most flow award goes to Cancer rising, Pisces rising. Yay! <laughs> Capricorn rising, Virgo rising, as well as sun and moon. All right. <laughs> Let's get ahead and start right now. I'm going to stop the share. If you're in my, and I'm going to get some water and then we're going to continue. If you're in the live premiere, thank you. You're my regulars. We know who you are. Uh, the Feral Writer, Jupiter Ace, Stephen the Jupiterian, uh, Purple Table Tarot, um, Ace of Spades. Uh, I haven't seen you for a while. Herbal Empress, Crystalline Alchemist, uh, Michael Thrash. Some now you come in and out. Um, Serge LaBelle, yes, uh, from Montreal. And Misbehaving, and Ellie Teller from Scotland. And oh, so many regulars. A lot of you guys coming from all over the world, uh, from England and from uh, you know South America. Welcome to my channel if you're new. These are the regulars I'm shouting out who are always with me in the live premieres where we're chatting about the content together in the live chat while this content is airing for the first time, all right? So I'm gonna take that water break and I'll be right back. And I, I wanted to mention one more thing. I almost forgot. You know, Hygieia is an Aquarius. Well, she's creating this uh, big gnarly tension with Jupiter and Mercury, Mars, and opposite Apollo, the god of plagues, um, at the end of October. And what it worries me is, of course, Aquarius represents the society, society, its rules, the collective structures that we abide by as a you know group. And Hygieia means hygiene, right? Like it's when we add all masking up and stuff like that. So hopefully that's not true that we're not heading back into that kind of territory, at least in North America. And hopefully that story with the TSA whistle blower that came out on what's that guy's name that everyone thinks is really crazy anyway but he's it's been repeated by other other channels now um i can't remember alex jones <laughs> um so we don't know alex jones is a bit of a you know strange one but if there's a tsa whistleblower who really did say this oh i'm not so crazy about this fall all right let's get gnarly it's gnarly let's get going here we are all right starting with the happy stuff so, hey, Aries, your personal story isn't about whistleblowers. No, your story, Aries, is about money. This is all about the money, honey. This is Jupiter. I'll be on stop doing it the same old way. Break the rules. Find your own way. Don't be on autopilot with your finances, your spendings, your savings, your earnings, structures, and strategies. If you're an Aries, sun, moon, or rising, you're getting a love up, especially sun for career, rising for your whole life. You're getting a lot of goodness in your earnings structure over the next year, until the end of May, basically, next year. Started this May, and I have you know, Aries, Mercury, Aries, Sun and Moon. I mean, I'm liking this really. I like the idea of a glow up financially and you're getting that. Mercury though, I mean, M M Jupiter is retrograding starting off here at 15 degrees and he's going to go back and he may correct, course correct or deepen the success you already had and really kind of think of it like, He's going back to refertilize the soil of your earnings. Give it a little bit of super grow so that when he goes direct on the 30th of December, he can really lush up some super plants of loving money, luck, growth of earnings, raises, promotions, new jobs, and financial success. You may want to engage the inner guru part of you that uses wisdom, knowledge, and sort of a, a deeper soulful approach to how you think you should be earning money. What are your values around money? Are you in alignment with your monetary values? Because you're going to have extreme money blow up next April. We'll be doing a whole video on that where things get really exciting for you in your finances. Now, regs to riches even for some Aries, sun, moon, and rising. 
Now, this retrograde Jupiter is going to start off with a trine to Mercury on the 4th of September. And this is about the sun is right there. It's just before the Kazemi. Check my webinar out for the 5th of September. What is this information, news, knowledge, or study? or idea that you want to engage and deepen when it comes to your work, your work routines, your office space, your health, possibly a connection to money and finances as it pertains to rental properties as well. But you're going to go back and deepen something here. And you may find that Mercury says something like, Here's some news from an old colleague, coworker, somebody from a former workspace because he's retrograde or some information or news from a former landlord or current landlord re renegotiating or calling you or following you with an opportunity. Jupiter is an opportunity. It's like an opportunity was already there in the past, but it didn't flourish. Jupiter retrograding financial opportunity may be coming from something that's already existed in your work and career and earnings and tenancies and rentals space. This is really good for health protocols if you want to revise what you put in your mouth and find the only the very goodness of the good for what you stick in your mouth <laughs> and what you eat and ingest and drink because Jupiter is retrograding in the house of things you put in your mouth, second house. And I think Mercury here is giving you knowledge and ideas about how to do that. So for me, I call it sober September. I'm going to put less wine in my mouth, <laughs> no wine, in the month of September as an Aries sun and moon. And lastly, money from the past can come back to you, basically, but it's going to be connected to work or a debt. Somebody owes you money. They've never paid it back. I have a couple of people who never pay me back some money. One, of the, one woman owes me three grand. Maybe out of the blue, she'll reach out and go, oh my God, I just won this money or I got rich and here's the money I, you've lent me like a decade ago. Wouldn't that be cool? So money coming out of the past, somebody owes you money, money returning to you. That's one option here as well that this retrograde can bring into form. Remember the retrograde ends on December 30th and it stations direct and the direct station is on that positive star of a go-getter and move shaker sheraton all things all systems go financially but use this time wisely every sign should do that wisely go inward pay attention to the inner guru the fairy godfather inside of you to give you the right cues and clues to your prosperity okay Taurus, sun, moon, especially more accurate, perhaps, is a rising sign. In the story here, what we have is we have Jupiter. He's moving in retrograde motion starting on September the 4th through to December the 30th. And he's going between 15 degrees and 5 degrees. Certainly, as I said earlier, the stationary uh, retrograde at 15. Do you have your ascendant sun or moon within three degrees of 15? And later on during the direct, do you have your sun or moon or ascendant anywhere within three degrees before and after five degrees of Taurus? These are going to be very critical impacts on your life. Now, with this motion of Jupiter retrograde, you're, and especially with Albion, where you've been doing things in a rote sort of state and, you know, the way you're expected, like following the rules way, you are going to become the rule breaker. You're going to suddenly go, you know, screw me, screw that. I'm not doing it that way anymore. I'm, I'm creating my own, my own path. Do it your way. I did it my way. Frank Sinatra. Oh, and there's a horn honking outside to tell you doing it your way is an excellent choice. Um, so you're going to do it your way. You're going to break out of rut. You're going to seek freedom. You might be a bit rebellious during this retrograde because of that Uranus piece. You're trying to find them, reveal the mysteries within yourself. You're going to try to understand yourself more deeply. It's good for therapy, self-reflection, introspection, getting to know who you really are under the surface because come on, Taurus, Jupiter's making you luckier than hell. You got the Midas touch, you got horseshoes up your bum all the way through to the end of next May, but now you're deepening the way the luck can arrive by knowing Oracle of Delphi, know thyself. Jupiter retrograde in the first house. So you're going to know yourself much better by the time December 30th rolls around. Now, with that trine to Mercury during the onset of the retrograde, there's a signature here. And that is that Mercury with the sun is saying, where is your best vitality and purpose? As And when it comes to the things and the matters of your fifth that Jupiter can also bring into the narrative. So Mercury is about communication, 
information and news and ideas in a house of creativity and the muse, the fifth, entrepreneurship, sexuality, romance, fertility, and pregnancy. Taurus rising people who can have children can get pregnant here. So, and Mercury can be that onset of the discovery that the test is positive, but he's retrograding. So maybe you already knew you were pregnant. You know, you're like, oh, let's double check. Or your partner's pregnant, but most likely you, Jupiter in the first house is the belly expanding. And well, I mean, you know, you could be a female listening to this and it's about you and you could be a male and your partner could get pregnant, but it's less likely. It's mostly for women that pregnancy is probably more probable here. Just just a suggestion, especially with Venus um, squaring Jupiter, et cetera. Okay, so moving into the next part of the story. Your fifth house can be about what brings you joy. What brings you vitality? Where do you want, where it inspires you and enthuses you to be alive at all? What turns you on, not just sex. And there's a big thing going on here about finding that joy spark and really tuning into what it is that will bring you the joy that you're seeking in life. And certainly you may have this sense of digging for the truth. You know, where am I, you know, really inspired? What brings me not just temporary pleasure, but deep and profound joy and enjoyment of life. And a lot of Taurus sun, moon, and especially rising are diving into that question over the next four months until the end of December on the 30th. By the time you get the answer and we springboard forward with a positive shaker and mover star Sheraton, you're taking this newfound inner knowledge and wisdom about who you are, what brings you joy and enjoyment in life, and you're making it work for you. You maybe you realize what makes you joyful is having a child. What makes you joyful is being a mom or dad. What makes you joyful is being creative, artistic, inspired, entrepreneurial, and romantic. Well, maybe you realize you loved sex after all. <laughs> it brings you joy. Keep all those stories in mind. I would say a little hint here. You've got a lot of tension, Taurus, is in your significant spousal type relationships coming up. All righty, at the end of October into early November, um, with that Mars <clears throat> death and rebirth experience in your seventh, and that energy squaring Jupiter. So just be aware that, the, you know, it also implies because we have a romance house involved that some Tauruses may be looking at unplugging from a dissatisfaction or non-joyful primary love relationship during this retrograde Jupiter. All right, are you listening in the live premiere, folks, or are you watching on the replay? Please hit that like button and help the channel grow. Uh, If you want to subscribe, give me a try or hit the like button. I would really appreciate that. All of these things do make a big difference in how this channel operates and expands, right? That little like button is a big deal in YouTube algorithm land. All right, moving forward to Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. So if you're a Gemini, I'm on my progressed sun in Gemini, but if you're a Gemini, sun, moon, or rising, here we have Jupiter moving in a very subtle place okay you're one of the signs least impacted on the outer level like the aries people i mentioned earlier like the libra people you know oh not the libra people sorry like the aries people um yeah like the libra people and like the capricorn people did i say that right my brain is offline it's sagittarius people so anyway you're not that impacted you've got an inversion going on here and uh, bottom line is is that your 12th house is the best place for jupiter because it is the house of spiritual attainment ashrams gurus spiritual life you know it's where you you know in india you go off after your householder years and you do your sadhana and you discover god and you find truth and you go find a guru and here we are that's your 12th house of moksha and full attainment of spiritual liberation and jupiter is that teacher or that quest for teaching or knowledge and spiritual wishes and fulfillments and he's retrograde. So you're going to go back over some old ground. You're going to go back and cover some old spiritual territory you've covered before, and you're going to deepen it, and you're going to open up to reveal those mysteries. Okay, remember the Sabian symbol that I mentioned earlier about the old man revealing the mysteries, and not vainly, because Jupiter will make it not in vain. You will find the answer to the mysteries. You won't do it the same old way you've done before. No, yeah, same old, same old. No, you're busting out. Why would you bust out? Because Albion is conjunct Jupiter, and Albion is like, hey, Hey, don't do it the same way. That's like the rules and regs you've been following forever. Forget it. Find a new way to find God. Find a new path to spiritual attainment. Do something different. Okay, so 
There's another meaning of the 12th house is bad pleasures. You may deepen your bad pleasures and find more, learn some new techniques or something, some tantra books or something. It's also where you could go to foreign lands for travel. And if you, you know, Jupiter retrograde in the 12th is a classic travel to a place you've been before, to a country that's foreign to where you were born, but to that you have either resided in or visited before. Um, you may have luck and opportunity from foreigners from your past showing up in your life during this Jupiter retrograde. And finally, if you make money online because you're, you have commerce and revenue from foreign shores and foreigners, that's mostly anybody with an online business today using their PayPal accounts, etc. This is Jupiter going back, well, first of all, to fix any false starts there, but also to, you know, that old cosmic do-over maybe, but also to deepen, fertilize the soil so that December 30th, when things spring forward on that mover and shaker star Sheraton, you spring forward with revenue garnished or created from foreign lands and shores. Big, big energy there next April for you as well. So it's very exciting. Because there's a trine to Mercury in the fourth house at the onset of the retrograde, and it sort of signatures into the whole thing, and the sun is there, your purpose is going to be revealed as well through fourth house matters. You may have a uh, childhood story, or maybe something you love to do when you were a child, something to do with property, land, private home life as well as very active over the four months of the, of the retrograde. Mercury in the fourth can be doing research, study, and learning from home. This You're going to apply into how you attain spiritual liberation in the next four months or how you recreate more revenue from foreign countries in the next few months those kinds of things um certainly if you have any addictions you need to break jupiter retrograde in the 12th will help you get rid of your self undoing by learning to be more wise and knowledgeable and actually looking very truthfully at yourself and how you undo yourself um you do want that mercury here to be recognized as a planet of merc mercantile and commerce and it's not the best time to sell a property okay but mercury retrograde can sell a property if you want it can happen but be cautious with that because things when he goes direct again could destabilize that's early october i went wait 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 let me get my mercury dates because you know september 15th he goes direct and that that you might want to wait till then okay don't don't try to do marketing and merchandising and selling of a home until september 15th if you are a gemini rising otherwise um people from your childhood could be coming back to you in the beginning of this jupiter retrograde hearing from childhood uh associates friends a parent that you've been in touch with but it's all going to help you with the 12th house matter so a parent tells you i'm so sorry that when you were little i told you you're worthless and useless and that's why you're now an alcoholic and don't have any life i'm making something up and you go oh my god mom thank you for sharing that i'm, I'm glad you cleared that up i mean you can clear up ancestral and childhood programming during this retrograde so that you no longer sabotage your own life basically you gemini's and that's about that now taking a little bit of a break uh just to yeah it's gonna be some food or some sugar hit don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe hit the bell for notifications if you're in the live premiere especially that helps the channel grow i'll be back in a sec after i get a chocolate hit of chocolate all right let's keep going guys let's get this thing on the show on the road show on the road we're moving forward now and talking next about woo. Cancer, sun, moon, especially rising sign. So, hey, Cancer, what what we have going on here is quite simple. I've got to move my bracelets. They're making a ton of noise. What we have here is we have Jupiter. Don't forget, I gave you the dates earlier in the video, you know, in the past, go back and look. But here we have them retrograding May of this year. I mean, sorry, in the sign of Taurus, May of this year till next year. The guru, the dispeller of darkness, the happy guy, Santa Claus, fairy godfather, is in the house of his joy, which is very positive. We look at that 11th house placement in Hellenistic tradition and say he's in his happy place. So Jupiter in the house of his joy is going to retrograde and you may deepen, go back over old ground to fix or, or renew something that wasn't quite working in your friendship circles, in your great gains from your career. You want a great gains from your career, but there wasn't exactly how you wanted it to be, or you got gate gains, gain financial gain and perks and promotions in your career, but now you're going to deepen it. You're going to make it even fertilize, even better soil so that on December 30th, when he goes direct at five degrees of Taurus, hey, you are going to be a mover and shaker in your career. So you're rethinking strategies. Now, because our forward looking way of seeing our life, um, you know, like our wishes, our dreams, our bucket lists, our plans for our life can be very 11th house. It's just a wish house. 
and he's a wish fulfillment planet. If he's going retrograde, he's asking you to look more deeply at what you want. Like, be careful what you want for. What are your true wishes? What are your ideal and true and authentic goals that you want to have happen? Friends from the past, though, can be coming back. Jupiter retrograde means what lucky, wealthy, or prosperous friends returning to the, your life in the next few months until December 30th. An elder sibling can deepen your connection with that person. Are they with you? Elder sibling is like big sister, big brother energy. That's why friends who are allies and benefactors who help you are also 11th house types of friends. Lastly, if you used to belong to a club, you know, I used to belong to the knitting club or the stamp collecting club, or I used to belong to the society of this or that, you're going to go back. You're going to think, I'm going to go back to that group or people from those clubs or groups come back to you. Sometimes we have windfalls coming off the 11th house energy, our karmic rewards house. So you may find some financial prosperity from the past returning to you, like money that you thought was gone or lost. It was like a potential yippee moment of windfall money can return all of a sudden and it's in your hands. Who knows? Why not? Albion says you're going to break the rules. You're going to you know, create great career gains but or have wishes and dreams and goals for your life, but you're going to do it differently. Nothing is same old, same old. You're going to do it your bust out, do it your way. And um, Jupiter here can be a guide, an ally, a guru, a teacher, and you may want to in, engage with such a person to help you personally become more leaderful. There's Apollo in your house of you at the time of this onset. You know, I didn't talk much about it for the collective, but there's that Apollo moment. And so, you know, how do you want to stand forth and lead like a sun god? And Jupiter's like, here, let me give you what you need from the house of great gains, from friends and allies. Because Mercury is trining Jupiter at the beginning of this narrative. Mercury is about news and information, but he's also retrograde and ideas and writing. And in Virgo is a writing house. So any Cancer rising who are writers, Mercury's going back to edit, to redo, to revise, to come up with new ideas, or to go over old ideas and repair them. And, you know, you may hear from siblings here and you may travel, go back to travel with a sibling to a sibling. And Jupiter here could actually, because it's so siblings, 11 and third house. I mean, there's a lot going on with the siblings for a lot of Cancer risings. And so it can be travel with a sibling, news of and from a sibling, positive news for and of a sibling, prosperity news for and from a sibling as cousins as well. Um, you may want to learn something. You have Athena, the goddess of knowledge and like wisdom too here. Like she's kind of, you know, very bookish and she's sitting here with Mercury. So two things, you're either traveling to a place you've been before and it may or may not involve friends or siblings in the next four months. And, or you're also wanting to pick up some learning, some skill, some trade. You may study something that really interests you that maybe you haven't had time to study or work your retrograde that you studied a bit, but now you're going to deepen your studies. You're just not going to keep it on the surface level. You know, you're going to go back and really do it all over again, like deepen your study level two or level three of something you've already learned, deeping, deepening the learning in your story. Now, what else is happening here? More one, sun is purpose, like career and purpose energies quite often. And you may be looking more deeply at what is your career and purpose as it applies to writing or learning or teaching. And then any learning you do will be connected to purpose and maybe any career path, any traveling may be connected to learning and career as well. Um, I'm going to stop with that and say that feels about right for you guys. All right, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. We have Jupiter moving in retrograde motion starting September the 4th through to December 30th. And as he retrogrades, he wants you to break the rules and do it your way when it comes to your career and reputation matters. I mean, how do you break the rules when it comes to your career and reputation? You you don't care what anyone says, I suppose. You know, you're not going to take anybody's flack. You're going to be completely willing to go outside the box in some area of career and reputation stuff. And if you want to break free and break through and break out, that's wonderful. Uranus is definitely saying, you know, be a freedom lover, rebel iconoclast and do your career your way. And this energy in your 10th house, don't forget, isn't common. It was 2011, 12, you last had it here. And the retrograde itself is kind of like a bit of a do over, but maybe it's also about people from your past who are bosses or people who are uh, a powerful or generous or magnanimous toward you. 
and it's retrograde Jupiter. So from the past, someone that you've known before coming out of the woodwork from your career space, uh, and it, it, the flow, the flow to Mercury is important. Um, it's like where you can make new money uh, by buying or selling something, but certainly even beyond that, by communicating, by marketing, by messaging, by negotiating. So some of you may negotiate a new contract for work. You may sign on the dotted line for a new job, basically. Others, but it is something about the past. You've known about this before. You've done this before. These are people you've known in the work and space before. If you already have a job and you're not going to change it, then something about your work and money situation is going to be more prosperous by December 30th because the retrograde is deepening something here. It's making fertilizer soil uh, energies between your 10th house and second house matters. And you're striving for an illumination of purpose. You don't want to just make money. You want purposeful earnings. Mercury will be in the heart of the sun on September 6th. Pay attention. Get downloads and insights, ideas about how in the world your money situation can be improved because you haven't had this Kazemi since I think 2016, and it really lets you figure out how your purpose and your divine intention for being in planet Earth can dovetail with profitable career and earnings directions. That's basically that story. Um, and because you have Athena here, I'm not talking about it for everybody, but this is often like, what do you need to learn, study, um, take a course, read a book in order to prosper more greatly. And you may find that knowledge through learning, even if just books or taking classes, can be very instrumental without Jupiter in the 10th to, to increase your success in your career after the 30th of December, as well as in your money and cash flow as a result of whatever career path you are on. All right, Virgo, sun, moon, and especially rising sign. So if you're a Virgo, this is a story that has a lot to do with you because you've got that Mercury bit going on here. I haven't had since 2016. Go check my Mercury retrograde, Mercury and Virgo video, uh, this long two-month stay. Um, you as a Virgo are going through a period of time, okay, just to ca call this one out, of really getting deep insight into yourself. You are able to penetrate the mysteries of who you are. You are looking inward and you are soul searching and you are communicating even with your inner guides at this juncture. So Mercury is helping you really reflect and inspect on who you want to be and who you are, especially Virgo rising, sun and moon secondarily. That's That aside, let's talk about Jupiter. That's why we're doing this. So retrograding September 4th to December 30th in your ninth house of God, truth and wisdom, in your ninth house of foreign shores and lands and travel and academic environments. Now I have two Virgos in my life, or three actually, and they're all in all of these things are very big on them right now. Like my daughter's going back to her last year of university, right? And so Virgo rising, this is dealing with Jupiter, guru, in her educational house of campus and college. Retrograding is not a bad thing. I mean, certainly if things weren't going well, he'll deepen and fix and repair the academic issues it could be a but it could be a professor like it could be very literal guys i'll give you how the literal sky stories are jupiter could be a professor she's had in another class back again he's back that benefits her greatly and if you things are going well jupiter retrograde deepens the wellness by helping you go a little deeper and fertilizes it so fertilization of academic stuff court and legal matters and judges favoring you uh virgo rising uh deepening of success through travel to foreign shores or foreigners but you're breaking the rules you've got l beyond just don't do it the same old same old way don't just take the academic curriculum that everyone else chose break out uh, don't just take a trip to a place that everyone goes to why not go to that far off place that no one travels to be an adventurer jupiter loves to travel and he loves truth and wisdom in the ninth house he's the pastor the preacher the guru the wise one the sage up here so you're looking for a lot of that too and honestly if you don't have a religious spiritual philosophy philosophy or belief a meditation practice or anything like that eight out of ten virgos between september 4th and all the way through to December, we'll adopt some kind of path. Because I mean, honestly, we got that sort of old man vainly trying to reveal the mystery Sabian symbol at the beginning of the retrograde of Jupiter. And what mysteries do you need to reveal? The ultimate mystery of the ninth house is what's your dharma? What's your path in life that you're meant to be on? What's the track that you're meant to travel? And a lot of you are really investigating that question. 
basically. Jupiter rules your house at fourth house of home. Some of you will travel quite a far away from home, but some of you may even think about moving to a, another country, changing your homeland during the next four months. And I, the last thing I want to say is look to find the things in life that are meaningful and that vitalize you physically. That's one of the things that's happening over the next four months. You want to be physically vitalized, full of radiant solar energy. You don't want to be burned in the sun. You want to be a vessel for solar light, for the radiant light of God, basically. And a lot of Virgos are really tuning into how they can be that that energy. And you know, that Kazemi is a big deal for you guys, especially that's on the 5th of 6th of September, especially if you're anywhere like, um, I'd say, hmm, if you're somebody with a 10 to 20 degree Virgo sun, moon or rising, this is going to be an important reset button for you. A big deal, super big deal happening on September 6th. So please, of all you guys, check my free Mercury Kazemi webinar. Uh, it's a replay available. You guys should definitely check that one out. All right, Libra, sun, moon and rising. If you're a Libra, you are looking at this Jupiter transit, um, which we haven't seen, by the way, 2011 and 12 in Taurus back again and Taurus is what Taurus is the part of your chart that is your chunky money house where you have that money that you don't actually physically earn in a paycheck way you can get that money because you borrow it from a bank you invest in a stock you get an inheritance you share resources with a spouse or business partner unearned income and that money that you share that unearned money is expanding. If you're a Libra, you're getting more of it. When May of 23 to 24, basically, and it's a rare transit. So it's once every 12 years, it glows you up in that kind of treasure chest money and money that you can access without having to dollars for hours hustle. So in that sense, you could possibly be getting an inheritance here, but if it's retrograde Jupiter over the next four months until the 30th of December, it's not a surprise you know it could be like there was this idea that you're going to get some money but then someone pulled the plug the lawyer said it we can't liberate in funds yet who knows and now you're going to have a chance to do it now you're going to go okay now now we figured it all out now this i can get it, my hands on this money um certainly it's very benevolent jupiter's going deep he's going back he's fairy godfather uh, if things were quite uh, unsure or there was a false start around chunky money you have a second chance here, especially if it's about stock investments, please be very careful. Markets are gonna be, I think, I think humbly, humbly, I'm not your financial advisor, very turbulent, right? In October, if not catastrophic. <laughs> so um, economies are catastrophic. No one's just talking about it. So in the end of the day, you can prosper when nobody else is Libra. You can figure it out, right? Especially with uh, land, property, real estate uh, investments, rentals and properties like that. And you've got a lot going on, but also money from your ancestral line, parents and grandparents is good for you as well during the next uh, year or so. And um, with Jupiter trining Mercury, Mercury is in your 12th house of foreign shores, back from deals and negotiations and things that may have to do with your inner life, even dreams at night, Mercury retrograde, pay attention to your dreams, do the reset button of the Kazemi, tune in on September 6th, see what you can download from beyond the beyond, from the Akashic records, from angel spirit guides or something, because you could get a huge download this month, especially around September 6th that really can help you restore or improve or fluff up or bountiful bountifulness energetically on those money. It's like, you know, your 401k, most of you guys have them in like stock investments and stuff, and you're probably panicking. And Jupiter can save the day. You have protection from losses here. Now, conceivably, a retrograde planet pulls back. And so if you've had gains between the third week of May to September 4th, it could be a signal of a depletion of those resources. So be a little cautious. And if you want to take in some preventative measures by taking money out of investments, if you don't mind missing out on a swell of investment success, then it might be a good idea too. Um, if you want to try to sell a property that didn't sell before, Jupiter retrograde, trying, you know, Jup um, Pluto in the fourth house is a good time to put it back on the market. And, um, well, spirit guides, angels, ancestors, and dead people 
communicating with you, profoundly attempting to reach out to you, listen in, get your inner ear all operational, please. This is a time of that deep, deep connection to those forces beyond you that are good and beneficent for you, archangels, guardian angels, whatever, spirit guides. So pay attention. And that's true for what? Until December the 30th. All right. So you're going to be a mover and shaker December 30th in your unearned income at, uh, all the way through the end of May next year if you play this game right. If you're in the live premiere and you still haven't hit that like button or if you're watching the replay and you haven't hit my like button, consider doing so. I'm just going to take it one more break. I realize now that these videos require me to take breather spaces. I just pause the recording and be right back. Alrighty, I'm back and we're going to keep on with the story of this Jupiter in Taurus retrograde. All right, and we begin the next narrative with the Scorpio sun, moon and rising. Now, look, Scorpio, let's get going here. It's Jupiter in your seventh house of marriage, right? Like a lot of you are going to get married, engaged, move in together, uh, meet the person of your dreams. This is all true from the end of May this year, like May 16th this year to May 24th, 5th next year, right? This is a lovely transit, but also means your significant business and marriage type partners are also in thrival. They're experiencing luck. It's a great transit. It's also good if you have a client's audience marketplace that expands, that prospers, that grows on and on and on. What a great transit. I mean, you got to love it. And then there's a retrograde and the retrograde is just the retrograde. It's Jupiter deepening and going back over old ground. And it's going to maybe help you. There's like a few ways it can play out. Any unresolved marital type issues with a significant long-term partner can be resolved as Jupiter with his wisdom and goodness and truth retrogrades here or any problems your partner has been having love or business can also be resolved for them. And this is true, of course, during the retrograde of September 4th to October, December 30th. But don't forget, it's also about breaking those rules. I mean, Albion, Jupiter, Uranus, freedom loving, iconoclastic, rebellious energy. Maybe your partner is super breaking rules. Maybe your business partner is breaking the rules. Maybe you have eccentric clients. But you can find that by embracing this idea of doing it your own way, breaking with the status quo, things will succeed. Jupiter can be fertilizing the soil of your relationship to your significant other so that you can even go deeper and more have more prosperity and abundance and joy together after he goes direct on December the 30th. If you have an old marriage partner that you're still friends with, that person can come back out of the woodwork and start communicating with you as Jupiter means positive spousal type energy from the past could return our business partners to you. Same with powerful teachers, guides, and mentors, even therapists from the past. Jupiter in the seventh may be returning to come back into your life between September 4th and the 30th of December. Jupiter in the seventh house is literally like in the setting place, right? And he's moving toward your career space. I mean, he's he appears to move next to the Gemini part, aiming for the top of the sky. So this is a kind of like the daylight part that he's moving into. So a lot of you Scorpios have had Jupiter in the nighttime part of your sky under here, like houses one to six now, for a long time, for six years. This is where you can begin to experience a turning point. And this is the first year you feel it, that now your career is becoming lucky. You're feeling more expansive, generous, prosperous, and you know moving in the right direction with the word career and purpose, like basically, right? You're in the daylight. And you'll feel maybe by December the 30th, uh, like September to the end of December, this deep, profound, beginning of a satisfaction in career as well. But also don't forget, you know, that is your, your, your significant other and they too are having something very positive happen for them. Because there's a trine to Mercury and Mercury is in your 11th house and he's also retrograde at the onset of this, um, this new story that begins on September 4th, Mercury with the sun is about your deepest purpose, purpose, that will bring greater career gains and success and prosperity to you. And don't forget, I mean, Venus has been in your career space now for months since June, and you should be experiencing some perks here, like promotions, raises, and positive benefits if you're a Scorpio rising, or a sense of like uh, even celebrity or glow up or people like you or you're popular. And now all of a sudden, this Mercury sun heading for a Kazemi on September 6th, come join my free webinar. It's going to be something like news, information, 
emails, phone calls, texts coming from allies and benefactors, friends who support you, favors from friends or elder sibling. And this energy can be a really good bonus when it comes to the inevitable direction this is trying to take you, which is to prosper and thrive in a purposeful career that you truly enjoy. That's Venus saying, do you enjoy what you're doing? I love with Juno up there at the same time, maybe a new contract, a new work assignment or something like that could be occurring in the month of September. Possibly you may hear from an old friend and their old friend has something that benefits your marriage. The old friend has something, former friend has something that benefits you in your marketing outreach, client audience stories. Mm Mm-hmm. Your social life with friends is often the uh, 11th house and with a re- Mercury retrograde, friends from your past are making appearances, right? Some of your social networks, people you've hung with in the past are coming back to you in the month of September. And even before that, actually, but you know, certainly September began at the end of August, seeing the old friends again kind of thing. And I wonder too, somehow this is going to be an experience of opening up new opportunities in your business, marketing, marketplace, especially if you're entrepreneurial. Uh, So look for friends to have tips and favors for you, especially in the month of September. Ultimately, Mercury is going to give you some ideas about how you wish to see the big picture story of your life, you know, what your longer term plans are. And Jupiter wants those to be long term plans for joyful prosperity and bounty. What else would Jupiter want? And there's a small possibility that for some Scorpios, there may be a relocation to another country even as a result of what's happening here. Just keep that in mind. uh, That's a whole other video as to why I'm seeing that, but there is that just for some of you Scorpios, a possibility. And it would be about prosperity and work and success and greater career gains. And that's true. You may not know that, but it may show up by the time that mover and shaker energy happens when Jupiter goes direct at five degrees of the sign of Taurus on December the 30th with that star Sheraton. Finally, I mean, if you are a Scorpio rising sun and moon, like I said in the beginning, and you're near 15 degrees for those placements, especially let's go 12 to 18 degrees, Scorpio sun, moon and rising, as this retrograde starts out, this is a big deal for you. When he goes direct, similarly, anyone near five degrees of the sign of Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising also experience a lot of juice from the direct station as well. Sagittarius, Jupiter is your ruler right? As it is for Pisces. So this is matters to you. This is a big deal for you. And Jupiter, you know, hasn't been in your sixth house of work and health routines and karmic debts and real life debts and te- tenancies and pets. Six house matters. Hasn't been there since 2011 and 12. You might want to go back to June of 11 to June of 12 and remember what was happening back then. In the intro, I told you all the other times that Jupiter spent a year in your Taurus house, but what was happening in 11 to 12 is back. <laughs> And there's opportunities and there's opportunity for work. But with Jupiter retrograde, it's work that you've done before with people you've done before, with colleagues and coworkers you've done before. Some kind of work from the past could be returning to you. Some kind of pet story could be opening up. You're gonna get a pet like you had before. Um, Maybe Jupiter retrograde is a rental opportunity, especially with Saturn in your fourth house is going to open up in the next few months until December the 30th. So new older rental opportunities, like, I mean, you had a chance to rent it, but it wasn't available. Now that you get a call that there's a rental opening or a place you wanted to rent as a landlord is now rentable. Um, I would like you to think about Jupiter here as the guy who's going to save the day if you're sick. So your health can improve over this next year, but with the Jupiter retrograde, it's going back over old ground. If you did, you try to a false start, repair a health challenge, Jupiter will go back and redo it, fix it up better. And if you have found ways to be more healthy and uh, feel really good, that's wonderful. See, Jupiter's funny. He can expand a health problem. Like say you've got a health problem, right? The house of sickness is Taurus. It could be your neck, your shoulders, right? The bull is often neck, shoulders, energies for Taurus people. I mean, the sixth house is Taurus. And if you've had any neck and shoulder problems, for example, right? With this Jupiter 
retrograde, he could repair what he blew up. But if Jupiter blows up a health problem, he often blows up things, then it's so you can notice it and have it fixed. So I think going retrograde, a lot of Sagittarius will start to fix a health problem that has been bothering them and may have blown out of proportion at the end of May through to September the 4th. Knowledge, wisdom, and learning, teachers, uh, all of that um, about how to improve your health and also how to um, learn about what you need to know in order to not to be sick. Basically, Jupiter's your learning god here. Teachers of health, learning, taking courses on better health protocols, things like that. Now, Mercury and the sun are in your career house, purposeful career, purposeful um, purpose, you know, and Mercury's coming to the heart of the sun on September 6th. You want to pay attention to that for sure. That's a big deal. And you're resetting here. You haven't reset like this since 2016. Something to do with the career and purpose. Like uh, my Sag ex-husband's son, uh, 2016 started working again, basically. I went back to work, you know, in a big way, got promoted and stuff like that. So after semi-retiring. So think about yourself in that way. What was going on in 2016 around the same time of year, you know, August, September, because it's back and you're resetting your agenda around work and career and purpose. And with Athena, some of you may be either advising or, or, or teaching people or learning yourself um, in order to get that reset started. And Jupiter is helping it be bountiful and resourceful and good. Mercury retrograde, hearing from old colleagues, coworkers, bosses, people in used to work with, uh, co- companies used to work for, bosses of companies used to work for, calling, phone calls, emails, Jupiter opportunity, expansion, growth, deepening your prosperity and success. So this can look very clearly like a career opportunity unfolding but don't forget it may take all the way through to december 30th when jupiter then goes direct boom and things begin to take form so it could be a lot of negotiations talks phone calls interview processes and stuff like that if you're a sad rising sun or moon trying to get a book published i love this venus juno conjunction up here sidebar as you heal the writing and editing of your book. Anyway, just a sidebar. Uh, Anything else? Um, No, that's about it. Hope I didn't go too short for you guys. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Well, um, Jupiter, uh, back in 2011-12, and here he is back again, um, this end of May to next May, this mid-May of 23 to end of May next year, Jupiter's doing its long one-year stay in your fifth house. That's your Taurus real estate uh, here. And it flows to you. Remember I said in the beginning, if you listen, you Capricorns and you uh, Virgos have trying energy from this. So you guys are benefiting from this quite a lot. You're very grateful for this retrograde, for example, and for Jupiter being in the fifth. Now, Jupiter in the fifth is about fertility. And some of you uh, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising people may be finding out that your your child is pregnant. You'll be a grandparent, especially grandparent, because this is the house of grandparents, the ninth house, trining Jupiter in the house of children. I see a grandparent announcement signature for some Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising people. That will be true that question mark and answer to September 4th to the 30th of December. A Jupiter retrograde, though, it may be like, oh, um, maybe old news is coming back. Like, uh, you know, maybe your child was going to be pregnant, but they decided not to, or they were, and then, and then they weren't, you know what I mean? And now there's good news uh, to go back and redo that. Uh, false start becomes a true start, basically, in regarding conception. Uh, Jupiter here can definitely expand your entrepreneurial business, but because he's retrograde, he wants to fertilize the soil of your entrepreneurial life. He wants to give you deeper and more fertile, lush ground to grow some entrepreneurial endeavors. The same with creative projects, manuscripts, paintings, writings, artworks, um, performance works, all of that. You can really deepen it. Jupiter wants to bring joy to the fifth house. He's a joyful, generous, magnanimous, optimistic guy. And joy and pleasure can be the fifth house. So you're expanding those things, but because you're retrograding, you might go back and find something that used to bring you joy and do it again. Now, fifth house is hobbies and talents. So, you know, an old hobby returns and you take up knitting, you take up whatever hobby you used to do and you find the joy in it. But also you may find that there's a talent that you have that you've taken for granted and Jupiter can help you deepen it by learning. Jupiter retrograde in the fifth house could be an educational opportunity for some of you caps in order to go back and learn and deepen your learning in order to enhance an existing talent, taking voice lessons because you can sing, writing lessons because you can write, painting lessons because you can paint better. 
It could be a muse teacher, art teacher kind of vibe. Jupiter here will make you very aware of what doesn't bring you joy. And when he retrogrades, you may pull away from false pleasures. They seem great at the time. Now you're like, I don't know, am I really having fun here? Also sexuality. I mean, romance and sexuality belong here. And you may be going back and, uh, you know, really questioning Capricorn, you know, where's your deepest joy in your sexual path and what kind of sexual path is the most joyful romantic path is the most satisfying for you um with uranus here next april big lush energy that could bring a windfall and a, a winning money or some sudden unexpected money luck and you're not there yet that's a big bang next april but before then it's still jupiter in your money luck house so you can win money here so because you're breaking rules though with albion you know like, I don't know how you break rules when it comes to winning money, but hopefully you don't break the rules at the casino. But, you know, you also, when it comes to your joy, your play, your pleasure, your romantic life, you're being a rule breaker. They're doing it your own way. You're not going into the rote, stayed, everyday way of doing things. Finally, your children belong here. And it's possible that good news and good things are happening for your children. But if your children had you know, some false starts or some challenges, Jupiter retrograde is going back to sort of a do-over, a reset, a restart for your children. And this is a good transit. Your children are lucky right now. If you're a Capricorn rising sun or moon, your kids are lucky. They're experiencing the luck of Jupiter. They're, they could get pregnant too, but they're experiencing the luck of Jupiter transiting through your fifth house. And so yeah, some of this could be, you know, Jupiter trining Mercury. Information and news from your children about academics, foreign shores, foreign land, travel, and Fertility, ah ha ha, yes, you may be a grandparent. Um, if you want to travel, Mercury loves traveling. He's uh, the patron protector in the ninth house of foreign shores. Simply said, travel to foreign shores and foreign lands is sanctioned by Jupiter retrograde in the house of leisure travel. Mercury protecting you in the house of foreign shores with the sun, purposeful, soul enhancing, vitalizing foreign land travel. For some Capricorns is really possible, foreign to your natal country of birth. And that's true all the way through, because this is a signature. So this starts September 4th, uh, the 30th of December, travel, foreign land travel is successful. Also good news, negotiations and contracts or um, deals, or what do you call it, settlements around legal and court matters can be very auspicious for you during the next four months of this retrograde cycle. Then you're off to the races with a boom as Jupiter stations direct on the 30th on that star of mover and shaker energy in your fifth house. If you wanna start an entrepreneurial business next year, January through the end of May, consulting, entrepreneurship, whatever, all systems go, or launch a creative project into the world. And uh, yeah, as I said with other signs, but here we go again. I mean, if your rising sun or moon Capricorn is within three degrees above or below 15 degrees of cap, this is a very powerful onset retrograde. And onset December 30th of popping forward if you have a sun, moon, or rising cap within five degrees of Capricorn. Boom, really positive, lucky. Jupiter trine energy, making things happen for you in your world. Okay, so I'm Aquarius rising, and this is what we are going through here. This is going to be a story of Jupiter in the fourth house, angular to us. Like I said earlier, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, and Taurus people around 15 degrees planets there or sun, moon, and rising are getting a huge amount of energy. It's all about us. We're going to have the most exacting, obvious critical pivotal changes as a result of this. We'll be visibly changing things in our lives. If we're an Aquarius, we're changing our home our home life, our prosperity from home, our bounty in home. We want a larger, bigger home, but we're going to break the rules and we're going to have sudden changes that are exciting next April with that conjunction. It means prospering from home, teaching from home, expanding your home, joy in the home, bounty in the home. And so for a lot of us, Aquarius is having had Uranus moving through our fourth house since 2018. We've had a lot of disruption and change in our home as well. But now Jupiter's stabilizing things, or at least bringing joy in the change. As this is retrograde and rule-breaking energy, we're going to go back over things we do in and from our home, and we're going to break the rules and do them differently. False starts and cosmic do-overs. I'm a teacher. I teach from home. I teach my sky reader class from home. Check it out in my description box. We're starting the third week of December. There's a wait list, but that wait list gives you early access and discount codes before I fill up. 
Well, I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm doing six weeks, not seven or eight. I'm breaking the rules. I'm going to try my best to get you all you need to know in a mere six weeks with bonus module content for self-study. So that's one rule. I'm breaking away of doing it before. So look to things you may be doing at home that you've been expand, trying to expand things and be prosperous in and from home. Now, if you want to buy a home, sell a home, uh, Jupiter here brings you luck. And it's really amazing with Mercury in your trining from your eighth house. Now, even though Mercury's not in your eighth house forever, it's a signature of the energy in which Jupiter begins his retrograde, right? It's an onset because Mercury leaves around the first week of uh, October. And so you're going to be able to buy and sell real estate and property successfully or rent real estate and property because of the sextile to Apollo in the house of rentals and tenancies. Buy, sell, rent, property, real estate, success for most Aquarius sun, moon, and rising people. It's bell curve astrology, guys. It's not going to be true for everyone. Now, investments, stock market investments, inheritances, money owed you, taxes, debts, credit card debts, mercury retrograde. Um, going backwards in your eighth house to to do some research, to do some information gathering, to dive deeper into what needs to be known here. You may uh, I'm going to have to see my tax accountant before the end of the year. That would be me seeing my tax accountant between September and 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 the end of this year, you know, December 30th, so that I can put things in place in order to benefit from tax loopholes, there's things like that, or the credit card, and people wanting to give me free money with no interest, maybe I'll say yes, the offer's on the table right now. So that kind of, not free money, you know, there's a transfer rate, and if you can't pay it off at the end of the, the gift money time period, then you're fucked, excuse my language, but if you could take that money, use that money, and give it right back, why not? So these are the kinds of things that happen with Mercury, marketing, merchandise, new news, information, negotiations, and money, like marketing and selling in the eighth house. Purpose. What is the purpose that's most authentic to how you wish to generate money that's passive or doesn't require dollars for hours that comes from unearned income that you don't directly work for? A lot of what Jupiter Mercury is trying to do for the next four months is show Aquarius is how to work smarter, not harder, how to generate more prosperity with less intensity and less work, less hard work. Well, you do have Saturn traveling through for three years, your second house of earnings. He's giving you a sober, realistic viewpoints, but also structures that enable you to create more prosperity in a very reliable, enduring way. So this is a lot of good money energy for you guys through the next four months. Secrets belong to the eighth house and some Aquariuses will have secrets spilled. Unfortunately, that Mercury retrograde takes hidden things from the past. And don't forget, Jupiter is on that old man trying to, you know, un un reveal the mysteries. And so family, family mysteries, basically. What, what kind of ancestor, family member, childhood story had to do with breaking the rules, shocking things, being revealed for some Aquariuses? Oh my God, you're going to find out that darker, mysterious, rule-breaking secret from your family of origin, mom and dad, or ancestors, or childhood stuff, breaking through between, well, probably before October the 5th. We still like Mercury still in that eighth house, but it, it's an overarching story until the, the December the 30th. I know someone in the question is going to say, should I invest in the stock market if Mercury is spending two months in the eighth house? Hmm. Only during the retrograde Mercury, which is here till September 15th. If it's something you've purchased in the stock market before and you know your way around, okay, otherwise don't go there. Uh, he goes direct on September 15th. The markets are going to take a downturn. Cash is king, but I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I a medical advisor. I need to put that disclaimer in my comments. But you may have some financial opportunity through the stock markets, okay? That's what I'm saying. Um, with Venus uh, in your seventh house, you may have a little tip from somebody, a stock tip, hopefully not insider trading, but that can happen as well in the next few months. Knowing where to put your money and when is what Mercury is, and Jupiter are trying to tell you, and so you'll know. Finally, yes, put your money down on a property. Buy, buy a property. Get a new lease if the opportunity arises, but don't rush. This is a story that goes through to December the 30th. All right, first and always first, best and always best, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. So what happens here is that you have Jupiter, not seen since 2011-12, moving through Taurus this year, uh, from May of this year till May of next year. This is a lush up, glow up, and a, a really beautiful energy that can benefit your siblings, 
They can benefit your cousins. They can benefit your ability to travel. Uh, it benefits your ability to communicate, to write, to sell and market, and to create an online presence if that's something you're interested in doing. Website, blogging, writing, periodicals are all the third house. Jupiter down here is also opening up the quality of the house, the house of the goddess. And he's saying, let's expand your intuition, omens, portents, and symbols. Let's get in touch with synchronicity. Let's get in touch with that more goddessy house that is more about the tangible intersection of the divine through serendipity and signs and omens. And you're expanding your capacity to engage that all of this year, the end of May, till the end of May next year. And I like it. It's kind of nice. All right, Pisces, you're already mystical as all heck. But now that you've got um, Neptune finally being joined by Saturn, you're making your dreams real. You're bringing your dreams down to earth. You're, you're realistic and you're able to achieve fantastical outcomes through hardcore realism and sober-minded actions over the next three years. And I love Jupiter in your third house, sextiling you, flowing to you, opening up possibilities for you. You might want to get a teacher and learn a skill. Like, I mean, seriously, Jupiter here is like, I'm going to get my real estate license. I'm going to get my auto body shop license. I'm going to get my accounting degree. But it's it's very practical learning. It's not going back to school to get a degree in philosophy. So some of you Pisces are doing a lot of learning. But because Jupiter's retrograde from September 4th to October 30th, learning something you've done before, but breaking the rules and doing it your way, you know, learning it. But maybe once you learn it, you break the rules and you create your own thing. Um, certainly some shocking prosperity stories coming through for a sibling or from a sibling. A little shock and awe with the Uranus piece for sure. Um, both the elder sibling house, Pluto, and Jupiter in the younger sibling, sibling energy or is very big in this retrograde four months for some of you, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Mercury is in the house of your spouse, house of your spouse, or significant long-term committed love, business partnerships, audience, and marketplace. There's a Kazemi, a reset button of Mercury on September 6th in the heart of the sun here. Simply said, you can reset the way you reach out to those marketplace audience clients in your life, but also your business and love partners. Because Mercury can be information and communications from the past, spouses and business partners from the past are coming back, or news and information or just things are being revealed to your significant other, your own spouse type person. And they're sharing this information with you, obviously, because it trines Jupiter in the third house. So you're hearing some good news stories, perhaps, involving travel, siblings, um, new neighborhoods, changing your neighborhood even, uh, moving to a new neighborhood, and maybe buying and selling as well. But only if your IC is floating in the third uh, whole sign house. It depends on your whole sign house system chart. Um, Mercury is contracts and negotiations and deals. Let's make a deal. Legal contracts, vows, and agreements are the seventh house, thus it's the house of marriage. You may be seeing the opportunity uh, sometime mm, September 4th through to October, December 30th to make a contract, sign a contract to do with writing, uh, to do with commerce, to do with marketing and selling. Mercury rules your home your fourth house. Therefore, some of you are selling property and you're going to have a very successful outcome or buying property. But you have to realize that Mercury's retrograde until September 15th. So breathe. Because as he's retrograding, it's not likely to show up as, you know, a done deal. And in fact, I would be careful about sort of accepting a contract to buy or sell a property before he goes direct on September 15th. But if you have to do it, look very closely at that fine print or have, you know, a few legal eyes look it over. Someone can change their mind, you see. And Mercury is the mind. And this is the house of the, the client or the person who makes an offer on your house or the house of your spouse. And someone's changing their mind when Mercury retrogrades as well. Or then he goes direct and they change their mind again. You know what I mean? So nothing's really solid until after September 15th. But September 15th to December 30th, you want to buy or sell real estate or property because Mercury rules your fourth house. And he's, you know, starting off with Jupiter, locking on prosperity, trying. It looks good. It looks really good. But breaking the rules might be, well, normally we go with an agent, but we sold it ourselves, you know, for sale by owner. That's a, that's a rule breaker, that kind of thing. Um Yeah. 
if you have an online business, this is going to help it prosper. But you're going back to deepen, uh, to fertilize, to redo, to reset what could have been some false starts in the online world or in your website or what you do in the online space. But between Mercury and Jupiter, this reset, especially in the beginning, like until October 5th, is really useful. And then as the months progress to the till the end of the story, all systems go. And lastly, siblings and travel. Basically, Jupiter loves to travel, Mercury loves to travel, traveling with siblings, traveling to see siblings, siblings traveling to you, all possible things that could happen between September 4th and December the 30th. If you don't travel, then you just hear from them, phone calls, emails, text messages. But if it's retrograde, and that sibling reaching out to you, to the sibling house, it's because you haven't heard from them in a while. Jupiter and Mercury retrograde. I haven't heard from them for a while. And now they're showing up, phone calls, emails, hopefully not knocking on your doorstep if that's not a welcome thing. There is nothing else I need to say here. Um, certainly you have Apollo, uh, which is a sun god in the fifth house, and there is a sextile to Jupiter. So one more thing I'd say is that money luck. Okay, so a possibility of some money luck coming in the shorter term from this kind of energy, and that would be more likely to show up in September, where there could be some, oh, yay, some financial prosperity, some money luck uh, energy opening up for you in the by mm, active no later than October the 5th. Alrighty, thanks for listening, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If you're in the live premiere and you're still listening, you haven't hit the like button, please do. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe and share my videos with other people. And uh, our next video we'll be doing, uh, because I'm recording this for you guys, August 25th, goes to Patreon first. You get it on Sunday the 27th. Stay tuned for my Monday uh, report that comes out every Monday. Um, I do a look at the week ahead in great detail for all signs every single Monday. And it's my new feature on my channel. It's doing well. I'm really excited by it. So that's one of the reasons you should subscribe to me. There's that weekly update, two moons a month, my 12 videos for all signs. I put out 20 to 25 videos a month. <laughs> I'm definitely active here and I read all my comments and I heart them and I read them and I like them and I pin the good ones. Sometimes I pin the pin of shame, troll as well just because I have a mischievous combative Aries quality. I'm not mischievous, I'm combative. <laughs> Mortal combat to the trolls. Thank you guys. Thanks to all my regulars. Thank you so much. Be well. Take care.